Uh, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Pastor Charles Tatum. I am the pastor of the Good Shepherd Baptist Church, and we just want to welcome you today to this uh, momentous uh, event where our mayor shall come and share some information with us on things that are happening on this great corner. We call this the Gospel Corner because we stand out here periodically and we preach right on this corner. But we're just so glad to have our mayor and all the other officials and city leaders here with us today. And I stand in, in, as a, in a dual role as a, to welcome you as pastor of this church, but also to welcome you as the uh, co chair or co-chair of the Concerned Lending Clergy Group, uh, who we work together here to make sure that our community uh, stays safe with our commissioners, and, and other uh, leaders of our community. So I welcome you here today. We pray that you, uh, your stay here for this short period of time will be one that is grand, that will be great, and that as our mayor and our other leaders come to share information with us, you might be able to glean uh, that information and take it back with you. So now, if you don't mind, those of you who, who believe, we're going to open up with a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you afresh for this opportunity to be able to come and join together with our city leader, O Heavenly Father, and other leaders of our city, O Heavenly Father, and be able to talk about the great things that they have planned for this part of your vineyard. Now, Father God, please continue to open up their minds, open up their hearts, open up their understanding, O Father God, that as we move forward, we, along with your divine intervention, might be able to do great things and greater things for the city of Columbus. And Father God, if you will be so kind, we're going to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, and for his name's sake we pray, and those that believe that can say amen. Ms. Perkins, come on, speak to us. I, will. I think I will. I think I will. Uh, wow, what a day. This is a wonderful day. Thank you, Reverend Tatum, for welcoming us and opening up and giving us words of encouragement. We serve an awesome God. Yes, we do. I am Carol Perkins. I am chair of the North. I humbly serve as a chair of the North London Area Commission. I'm here to say good morning to all of you, to our dignitaries, uh, to our council members, and to our area commissioners. Um, to Mayor Ginther, I want to thank you for being with us today. I want to thank you for your passion and your commitment to Linden community. You've been true to your word about your commitment and your desire to see our community grow. Not only do I consider you my mayor, but I also consider you my friend. Today is a very, very special day as we celebrate, as we celebrate, as we celebrate the Hudson Street Project. I've, I've been an avid supporter, and I can tell you when I saw the renderings, I was completely and totally blown away. This is not just about repaving our streets. We're talking about rehabilitation that will provide connectivity for the area residents, trees, new sidewalks, shared lanes that will enable residents to um, navigate this area safely. Uh, in their environment. Um, not only that, but it will also provide business opportunities. I am so excited about the possibilities this construction will bring to help our community grow and strive. And with that, I want to introduce the man who needs no introduction, Mayor Genther. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you all. It is a great day to be back here in Linden, and I want to thank everyone for joining us here. I want to thank 
Commissioner Perkins for that kind introduction, Pastor Tatum for graciously hosting us. And I want to thank all of the commissioners that are here today for all their great work, as well as faith leaders from across the community that are here uh, to join us. We're also joined today by young people involved in Remember Us Urban Scouts and by Miguel, but better known as Gino Tucker, a lifelong South Linden community member, providing mentorship and opportunities for youth to develop life skills and enjoy monthly bike rides. As I said back in late 2018 when we released the One Linden Community Plan, great neighborhoods do not happen by accident. They result from vision, planning, leadership, from a sense of community. With the determined commitment of Linden residents and stakeholders, business owners, and community groups, we spent 18 months together to shape the One Linden Plan. So glad that Councilmember Nick Bankston has joined us here today. He was the city's point person and director Carla Williams Scott shop to help the community as the community developed the One Linden plan. Many of you were that are here today were deeply involved in the planning process led by Director William Scott and the Department of Neighborhoods. The final plan set the vision for long-term transformation in one of our city's oldest proudest and greatest neighborhoods. A roadmap was created for safe Linden neighborhoods, economic development and access to affordable housing, quality health care, education and employment opportunities. Since then, through the involvement of the community and our partners and with the city's investments, implementation of One Linden is unfolding. Our shared vision is becoming a reality step by step, block by block. We're creating more affordable housing in Linden, like the single family residences built by Habitat for Humanity on Myrtle Avenue, and Ken Lawn Place Apartments, Homeport is building on Cleveland. The Linden Fresh Market and Charitable Pharmacy opened last year to support residents' health with access to fresh, nutritious food and pharmacy services. We're focused on supporting local businesses and entrepreneurs to build Linden's economic vitality and on reducing gun violence and crime to ensure neighborhood safety. The Walk Safe on Cleveland campaign is focused on eliminating pedestrian crashes on Cleveland Avenue in Linden, where their incidents happen far too often. Next year, enhanced crosswalks and pedestrian signals will be installed to provide safer crossing of the street. Programming is advancing to support the early childhood experience and student access for children and youth growing up in Linden. And we're making needed capital investments. One of the city's biggest capital investments here opened last year, the new state-of-the-art Linden Community Center to expand access to recreation, and to serve as a hub of activity space for residents of all ages. Recreation and Parks Director Bernita Reese and her team offer a variety of programming at the center and the adjacent 20-acre Linden Park that has been renovated. It's an opportunity center with access to healthy choices, career and academic support, and a place for Linden youth to participate in activities outside of school hours. The Department of Public Service made infrastructure improvements on Medina Avenue to support safe access to the center and provide a new main entrance. New sidewalk and ADA curb ramps were built on streets around the site. Many other sidewalk projects were built in Linden in the past few years, and more are in the works. Some are in conjunction with Director Kristen Ath's department, the Department of Public Utilities, as they implement blueprint Blueprint Linden for better stormwater management with green infrastructure. Now we're here to officially kick off the $19 million project to fully rebuild Hudson Street from I-71 to Cleveland Avenue. Identified it by the One Linden Plan as a catalytic project to connect the community. Everybody's excited about it. Hudson is part of Linden's history and identity lined with houses, local businesses, churches. It serves as an important east-west corridor 
that unifies North and South Linden and connects Linden to adjacent areas of the city. Director Jennifer Gallagher and the Public Service Transportation Engineers spent the last couple of years completing detailed planning and preliminary work needed to get this critical roadway project shovel ready. And I know the people of Linden are ready to roll. The new roadway will be flanked by a sidewalk along one side and a shared use path along the other side to support mobility options and safely accommodate all users. The path is the first piece of the Central Ohio Greenway's vision to create an east-west connection that ultimately links the Alum Creek Trail to the Olentangy Trail and the Scioto Trail. So the cyclists that are here and the walkers that use these paths and, and runners are very excited about it. A new water line will be installed on Hudson and new storm sewers added as well, which is so important because a little bit of rain can flood up the street in these neighborhoods pretty quickly. And all of that storm water and storm sewers that are being added are important. Traffic signals will be upgraded, ADA curb ramps and street lights installed. The median on the east leg of Hudson's intersection at I-71 will be improved and serve as a gateway to Linden. We ask for the community's patience as the project progresses during the next two construction seasons. The brand new roadway and amenities will make the inconvenience well worth the wait. Step by step, big idea by big idea. The One Linden Community Plan is unfolding and becoming a reality. Our shared vision for this neighborhood is right around the corner and within our grasp. If we continue to double down, invest in our neighbors and our neighborhoods, we know the best days of Linden are still ahead. Our collective efforts are yielding positive changes and investments that will endure and serve residents now and for generations to come. Now I'd like to welcome Public Service Director Jennifer Gallagher to the podium to talk more about the construction we see here on Hudson Street. Director Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning, everybody. Good to see all of you today. The Department of Public Service and specifically our design and construction team are especially excited to be here and share Linden community's enthusiasm for this great project as we build the new Linden, or I'm sorry, the new Hudson Street project. A transportation infrastructure project of this scope will transform the value of Linden. We have been committed all along to the timely completion of this project's preliminary planning, the technical design work, the utility relocation work required, and the engagement with the property owners. To see construction finally underway is truly exciting today. The initial phase is occurring on Hudson from Cleveland Avenue and McGuffey Road. The first task began earlier this month to install a new 24-inch water line to replace the 100-year-old line that's under the roadway. As work progresses, construction will proceed to entirely rebuild the roadway and make the additional improvements that Mayor Ginther just outlined. The new storm sewers, new traffic lights, street lights and street trees, and wheelchair and stroller accessible curb ramps at the intersections along Hudson Street. The second phase will occur from McGuffey Road to I-71. We anticipate that each phase will take approximately one construction season, and so the entire project will be delivered by the summer of 2024. Undoubtedly, folks that live in the neighborhood and travel in Hudson are aware of the detour that has been put in place to safely maintain traffic in one direction throughout the construction season. You can see that eastbound traffic is being maintained while westbound traffic has been detoured onto Weber Road. This traffic pattern will remain in place throughout construction. The city appreciates CODIS partnership to temporarily relocate the bus stops onto Weber Road. Our goal is to minimize disruption of transit users as much as possible throughout the project. A highlight of Hudson's reconstruction is the infrastructure being built to support the travel of pedestrians and bicyclists. A new sidewalk is being installed along the north side of the project 
and then a SUP, a shared use path, is being installed on the south side to allow for safe, active mobility. And as Mayor Ginther stated, this is the first phase of that connection um, from the east side all the way to the west side. Hudson Street is unfortunately on the Vision Zero Columbus's high injury network. It is a corridor with a higher density of fatal and serious injury crashes and or crashes involving vulnerable road users like pedestrians and bicyclists. So in addition to the sidewalk and the shared use path pro uh, involved in the project, we are upgrading our traffic signals at intersections to enhance safety along the corridor for all users. In a separate project, public service is working with the Ohio Department of Transportation to design safety improvements at the intersection of Hudson Street and Cleveland Avenue, just right over here to my left, to address the high number of crashes that are occurring there. And as we are working on the design um, of that intersection, we are also working on a design at Cleveland Avenue and Myrtle to realign the curve at the north leg to upgrade the traffic signal and to adjust the curb alignment. So while we're doing all that, we will continue to work very hard to keep the Hudson Street construction moving and to minimize the disruption to all of you in the neighborhood. Just like the Linden residents, we are eager to see this vital roadway project come to fruition and provide safe multimodal travel. So now I would like to introduce Council Member Nick Bankston to say a few words. Thank you. All right, is everybody excited? Yeah. All right, when I say Linden, you say strong. Linden. Strong. Linden. Strong. All right, I am so excited uh, to be here with you uh, today. Uh, my name is Nick Bankston, and I have the pleasure of serving you on council. I uh, also want to make sure that I recognize uh, my partner on council. She couldn't be here. She's at the doctor's office, so we're making, hoping that everything is okay with that uh, kiddo. But council member Lourdes Barroso de Padilla, who is chair of our public service committee, I want to thank her for getting this to the finish line. And I know if she was here, what she would say verbatim is that our neighborhoods are our heartbeat. And right now we are at the center of neighborhood when we talk about Linden. So I want to thank her for her leadership, as well as Mayor Ginther uh, and the entire team at Public Service and Record Parks and everyone in neighborhoods and everyone who worked on this project. But more importantly, I want to say thank you to the residents, to the advocates, to the authors of the One Linden Plan. And it was my honor and pleasure just to simply be the leader uh, and lead our community in that effort and, and help with that. Uh, I worked closely on the One Linden Plan during my time in the administration uh, under the direction of Carla Williams Scott. Uh, the residents of Linden champion their own story, their own future, and this reconstruction of the Hudson Corridor is a perfect example of the great work they've been able to accomplish. This $19 million investment is a real opportunity for us to continue our commitments to creating community right here in Columbus by connecting our neighbors and neighborhoods across the region one mile at a time. As chair of the Economic Development and Small and Minority Business Committee for Council, I'm excited about the opportunity that this is going to bring to the Linden community. Economic development isn't simply about investment and infrastructure. It's about investment in our people and opportunities for them to lift themselves up. And this project reflects both of those objectives, both investment in true infrastructure and hard infrastructure, but also investment in our people. Hudson serves as a gateway to Linden and making sure that the first impression of our neighborhood is the best one, provides ample opportunity for small businesses to thrive and for us to continue to leverage our investment. Once a dividing line, this new construction of Hudson will stand as a beacon, a beacon of the mantra that says one Linden, two neighborhoods that were once divided coming together, not only to connect one another, but to connect our entire city. And to just think about that, that this will connect the Owen Tangi and the, uh, and the uh, Alum Creek Trail, connecting our city east-west right in the heart of our city. And so I'm so excited about this opportunity. I'm so excited about this investment because it is a reflection of the One Linden moniker. 
a reflection that says, not loss of heritage, not loss of identity, but a reflection of a common mission and unity to build a stronger and more prosperous Linden. So one, thank you all for being here again. I have the pleasure of introducing in that spirit of one Linden we heard from our chair of the North Linden Area Commission. Uh, now we are going to hear uh, from a great advocate on the South Linden Area Commission, uh, Area Commissioner Mayo McKinday. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my, name is, my name is Mayo McKinday, South Linden Area Commissioner. Um, I'm excited all that has been said about this project is, is great stuff. Uh, just uh, being in construction myself, I'd like to see people get back to work. You know, so America getting back to work is a great thing. Uh, to uh, everybody who's here, again, welcome again. Uh, to uh, uh, the clergyman, uh, Pastor Tatum, that allowed us to use this uh, church. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Uh, to my fellow area commissioners uh, who are here from North and South London, thank you. Uh, to our directors, you know, thank you, Mayor Andrew Ginter, thank you so much. Um, you've come into Linden and uh, the West Side from the day one, and you know, you've continued to do that, and you've continued to do a lot of work in here, and I appreciate that. Uh, so uh, I call you a friend as well, so it's, it's, it's always good to see friends do great things. So with that being said, I, I think a lot of things has been said about this project and what good it will bring uh, to be able to uh, revitalize uh, just a street that you know that's been beat up over a hundred years old street uh, is something that we, we ought to be uh, excited about you know over over the, the whole country we've heard about infrastructure uh, work that needs to be done in the nation I'm glad Columbus is leading some that effort in the sense of uh, getting our infrastructures revitalized so uh, without further ado I want to also thank the director Carla William Scott she's uh, one that's always in our meetings and always making sure that we are uh, doing well as a neighborhood so uh, as, as well as thanking her, I want to also uh, invite her to the stage and uh, come give you some words. Good morning, Lyndon. Good morning. Thank you, Commissioner McKenday. And thank you, Pastor Tatum and the Good Shepherd family for hosting us here today. Thank you to all of our partners who are here with us this morning. This would not be possible without the collaboration of many. I would like to give a special thanks to you, our community leaders, from North and South Linden, the Linden Concerned Clergy, and our young people and mentors from Remember Us Urban Scouts. Thank you to our commitment to, to your commitment to Linden and to our city. And there our babies are over to our right. <laughs> As the mayor stated, Linden has a rich history and deep community pride. That's why it's important that One Linden gives us the strategic plan that we need to uplift our neighborhood so that all of our residents can, pos can prosper. Strong neighborhoods are the backbone of any great city. They are where we connect and live our lives, raise our children, and start our businesses. While many of our neighborhoods have changed over time, over the years, one basic fact remains the same for all of our residents. Strong neighborhoods are places where we feel at home. One Linden contains a range of metrics and strategies and recommendations that work in an integrated way to address these key factors that are important to every neighborhood. Education and workforce, health and safety, housing, small business and retail, and transportation. The plan also lays out a strategy to move these ideas from inspiration to implementation. It will advance the needs of Linden residents and prepare our community for growth that continues to shape other neighborhoods throughout Columbus. And best of all, this plan was driven by you, our residents, business owners, and community groups. As has been shared many times up here this morning, the public engagement process lasted over one year. It was lengthy, and at times we didn't always agree. <laughs> but our residents were resilient and determined, time after time. They continued to come out to meetings, evenings, weekends, anytime we asked them to, be, and to give us their input. 
The commitment to the improvement of the neighborhood is one of Linden's most notable qualities. There is a sense that Linden is truly moving forward and that change is possible. During the community engagement process, I had several residents that were somewhat skeptical about our commitment to this work and to Linden. You see, they shared with me they had been part of many other studies and surveys, but never felt like there was progress and weren't sure that this time would be any different. Our commitment to them at that time, and our commitment still is, we are doing this work with you and not to you. And everyone has a voice in the process. Members of the working groups, the advisory committee, attendees of events throughout the process are credited for brainstorming the ideas that led to the creation of this plan. They work collaboratively to identify problems prioritize issues, and provide creative and attainable strategies. The Linden neighborhood has a solid foundation of community leaders and dedicated residents who are committed to working toward a brighter future. Our shared vision is becoming a reality step by step. Thank you to the residents of Linden who have brought us to this point and serve as our North Star. We are just getting started and the best is yet to come. And now I would like to ask the mayor to come back up and close us out. Thank you. Well, thank you, Director, and thank you all for joining us. If, if you were part of, yeah, come, please come on up, Gino and the Urban Scouts, because this is what it's all about. Uh, if there is a better example of what the One Linden Plan is than these young people, I don't know what it is. Let's give it up for these young people who are doing great work, and to Gino and the team, we're grateful for all that they do. But I think, uh, you know, Director William Scott hit it on the head. We, we said, raise your hand if you attended any of the community meetings where we're part of the development of the One Linden Plan in any way, shape, or form along the way. The one thing we heard over and over and over again, we don't want this to be a plan that sits on a shelf. We want to see action. We want to see investment. We want to see change. Well, friends, neighbors, this is what the One Linden Plan is all about. These young people investing in infrastructure. I was counting up just earlier this morning all of the public, private, nonprofit investment into realizing the vision of the One Linden Plan. We're nearing a hundred million dollars that's been invested in people, facilities, infrastructure. And you know what? We're just getting started. I couldn't be more proud of the entire team of this neighborhood uh, and so excited about what is ahead and the future that these young people are going to build right here in Linden. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, for the press, I'll stick around for any one-on-one -on -one questions. Uh, but let's give it up for these Urban Scouts. Hey, everybody, don't, don't move yet. Don't move yet. So how y'all doing? I'm Gino Tucker. I'm the CEO and founder of Remember Us Urban Scouts. We launched here in Linden in 2019. And to date, we have served over 115 students, citizens, residents of Linden. And... This would not have been done without City Council, the City of Columbus, my brother Andrew, Mayor Andrew Ginther, uh, my brother Nick Bankston, Councilman Nick Bankston now. Uh, and we, we appreciate the support the city has had and continues to provide for Urban Scouts. These young people are our newest class of Urban Scouts for 2022. Give them a round of applause. And I'm going to just give a couple of them a, a, a second to talk about their experience with Urban Scouts and what the construction would do for them. Hi, I'm Carol Ledesma. I've been a part of uh, Remember Us Urban Scouts for two years. No, this is my second year going on now. And, well, the experience is actually pretty, pretty nice. I feel welcomed. I feel, you know, loved. Um, it's very nice. The, uh, the people over here, they're very, very loving. I just like it very much. And, yeah, it's super nice. The um, bicycle program too it's really nice we can see everything you know when we go we can explore uh, see things that we haven't seen in our little neighborhoods and yeah
So for everyone who doesn't know, this is his first time. This is the co-founder. This is Little Gino. Nice to see everyone. My name's Gino Tucker Jr. And this program's amazing for the girls and for the boys. Girls learning braiding and boys learning lawn care. And the bike program, I, me personally, I haven't rode a bike in a little minute. I don't ride my bike like that. So the bike program is like being able to relive when you was younger and ride your bikes again. Because no kids in London, even when I'm at my grandma's house and I'm at my cousin's, you don't see no kids in Linda riding bikes. All the kids want to talk about where you're from, where we from, where I'm from. That's all they think about. This bike program can help get their mind off of something else and notice the little things about the neighborhoods, the good things, instead of the bad things. Yeah. 